Welcome to the Silver Arrow Show. Coming up, we discover the art of the perfect pit stop. We have exclusive footage from the most important race of the weekend. And find out if you feature in our top five fan tweets from the British GP. During the British Grand Prix, the team produced the fastest pit stop, a rapid 2.33 seconds for Lewis Hamilton. I'm joined now by Sporting Director Ron Meadows. Tell me, Ron, how do you define the perfect pit stop? Oh, it's a difficult one to define the perfect pit stop, but if, you know, the, the pit crew needs to be in harmony with the driver. The driver needs to come in at the correct speed, he needs to stop on the marks, you know, he needs to have all the settings ready on the steering wheel so that when he launches it doesn't wheel spin or, or bog down. And obviously once he's stopped, the guys have to connect to the wheel nut as quickly as possible, lift the car on the air at the same time, go back on, rattle the wheel nut back on as, as quick as they can, but not too much, because then you can't crack the wheel nut for the next pit stop, and obviously the, the jacks need to re release as soon as you're finished on the guns. Looking to the other side of the pit stop, how does, what is the hardest challenge for the pit crew? Well, the, the biggest challenge is obviously making sure all four wheels are tight when, before they release the car. But it, uh, we, we, you know, we practice so often, we'll do 60, 70 pit stops a week when we get opportunity. And at the race, we'll do another 60, 70 from Thursday onwards, trying to hone it. Plus, we, we, we try people in different positions because, you know, sometimes the cars come in locked up and we get people knocked over. We have people who are poorly in the morning and suddenly can't do it or hurt to wrist in practice. So we, we do a lot of juggling around with different people. So we're, we're covered for every position. So obviously, like the drivers have their responsibilities and the pit crew does, but are there any other factors that could affect a pit stop? Well, a lot of it's to do with a grip in the, in the pit lane. For instance, that uh, for a wet race, we wouldn't lay rubber because often during practice sessions we'll lay rubber to help the, you know, give it more grip when you stop for a wet race. You don't want that because water and rubber don't mix. So it, uh, it, it's, all about, it, it's, it's all about getting traction out of there and having a, a, clear, a clear run into the fast lane. We have, we have the pit lane, we have the slow lane, then we have the fast lane. At, at most, most races, but some tracks it's quite a narrow pit lane and they'll reduce the speed limit from 80 to 60. And that's really quite difficult because there's probably only three or four meters from where the hoses end on the gantry to where the pit wall is. And it's, uh, you've got to try and feed another car in alongside them to race. And these cars are 1.8 meters wide each and next year they're going to be two meters. So it's going to be more difficult next year releasing. So over the weekend you had a few double pit stops. How did that work? Yeah, it, uh, we, we call it a stack scenario, which is uh, when both cars are entering the pits on the same lap and ideally you'll want at least a six or seven second gap because otherwise the second car is going to lose time especially if he's got traffic behind him so it's always, it's always good to get a six or seven you know six or seven second gap hope ideally a 10 second gap because the rear jack guy has got to lift this car drop it and get out of the way otherwise the second car is going to run him over but it's a scenario we, we practice a lot back at base and it, uh, it worked out perfectly. We were very fortunate that we had the gap between the cars and we didn't lose any places because more often than not, the second car will lose a place and that happened to Ferrari, I believe, because they came in one lap before us. And uh, I think Kimi was the second car and lost, lost some places, but there's not much you can do about it because what, you, you can't, you're not allowed to slow people down in the pit lane, so you just have to, you just have to come in at your normal speed. But uh, yeah, it worked out very well. And all four stops, for, it was, uh, what, you know, well, just as we practice it, so that was nice. This is our annual uh, Summer Family Day. Um, it's for the staff of Mercedes AMG Patronus uh, Formula One team. We get everybody to come along. It's just a chance to hang out together and enjoy ourselves. Yeah, no, it's been great. It's nice to have the whole team together because we don't often get to see everyone as well from Brackley as well as Brixham. So, no, it's nice to have everyone together. Yeah, it's great. You know, we all work very long hours, uh, and and to come some some sort of an event like this where you've got both factories together, it's it's fantastic, and and obviously to watch the race as well um, in the sunshine is great. This is our opportunity to say thank you to all our families for their patience and their long suffering, and to give the kids a great time to connect with the Formula One team that we're all part of. It's fantastic that both Lewis and Nico come down to this event. They are usually the highlight of the day for everybody. I hope you all have an awesome day, which you really, really deserve. I hope it's been great fun. So everybody's just seen the drivers on television, they've seen them on the podium, and to, to be able to have them here within a couple of hours of the race, shaking everyone's hand, bringing the trophies from the circuit. If everybody's had a great time, if the weather's held off, if we've uh, tired out a few hundred children, 
uh, then we can definitely say we've done a good job. <laughs> Unfortunately, Andy won the toss of the coin, so he got to choose which lane to go in for the obstacle course. So I'm talking about the most important race of the weekend. Um, the honour of the team here was at stake, so I put everything into it. Uh, Andy picked the better lane, as a little kid told me, just before the start. So this was why, as soon as I had a bit of a lead, I swapped over into his lane. Um, it stopped him overtaking me as well. But anyway, so very proud to represent you on the bouncy obstacle course. Um, I hope that's not an annual event. And thanks, Toto, for stitching me up. At last weekend's British Grand Prix, it was chief designer John Owen's turn to pick up the trophy on the podium. So this actually wasn't your first time up on the podium for the team? Yes, I was uh, fortunate enough to be in 2014. Um, on that day, Nico didn't finish, so it was only one of the drivers, which was a shame, but um, uh, the reception that day was amazing for Lewis because he hadn't won for a long, long time and to win in front of the home fans was amazing. Um, and then this year was a bit different. It was both drivers. So it was great to be there with both of them. And, um, Quite emotional in the sense that uh, having watched the race and seen some of the difficulties, um, you're always pleased to get both cars to the end and then also to have them in those positions was great. And you looked quite drenched by the end of it, did they get you with a champagne? Yeah, it's a useful experiment, I mean uh, we like doing experiments in Formula One but I would say that when you have one driver it's easy to defend yourself but when, they, when you have two from the same team you, you have no chance. Okay. I didn't really see but I do remember Lewis pouring a bottle of champagne over me just after I'd finally managed to regain my eyesight. Did you manage to talk to the guys on the podium? Yes, I did. I was um, actually having to sort of talk to Nico a little bit and, and warn him that he'd been, uh, was under investigation and would likely go to the stewards at the end of the race and just sort of what protocols he needed to follow. And did you spot any family or friends in the crowd? Obviously, it's your home Grand Prix. No, I didn't actually. This time, uh, uh, my, uh, my wife was there in 2014, um, not this year, um, but uh, obviously the team's there and uh, lots of friends in the team. So it was great to see them all there. And how would you rank this moment as on your overall career? In my job, you're never satisfied, and um, you've always got a better car to make. Um, I looked down at the car from the podium, the two silver arrows there together, and thought, there's a lot more work we need to do. That's it for this week's show. Don't forget to subscribe and follow the team on social media in the build-up to the Hungarian Grand Prix.